more techniques than are required in any other branch of the service. In all the strategy of modern mechanized war, there's nothing these amphibian fighting flying sons of democracy cannot do. 24 men to every Trojan horse, I mean to every C-47. Into this workhorse of the army go many things besides soldiers. There are even graders and scrapers for the engineers to construct airports on the conclusion of their journey in a glider at the end of a nylon leash. But whether riding the C-47s with a scraper or a glider tied on behind, they're a chosen lot. Recklessness balanced with steadiness. Daredevils with equilibrium, they fly without armor or protection. But courage sits beside them and confidence in their cause. While in the pilot's seat is a master of the art of flight, ready to give the goal signal. That motto on the shield in classic Latin is their aim, and it means get their fustus with the mostus. One of the youngest of the armed services, the youthful TCC has grown till it's now larger than was the whole Air Force of three years ago. The low-flying C-47s, no armor, no defense guns, just men and equipment filling all available space in tow car and glider. The latter's light construction is fortified by a tubular steel frame, protecting the occupants against anything less than a head-on collision. The C-47s are basically DC-3s of commercial airline type, with plush and pretty hostesses removed. In place of cushioned seats, there are 24 bucket seats for men with full fighting equipment. or contour flying is the ship's only protection. Enemy fire from the ground can't be trained on the planes before they're out of range. Enemy fire from above would endanger the enemy's own forces on the ground. Altitude, maneuverability, armor, and protective firepower are not for these valiant pilots. Thus, they darkened Sicily with their shadows and took and held enemy objectives for 24 hours till our seaborne troops arrived. Of the TCC's most effective services, one is transporting engineers to bomb or to build airports or bridges. Another, a merciful service, brings first aid to the wounded and their evacuation from fields still raging with battle. Thus are they the first to arrive and the last to leave, flying on the wings of destruction or mercifully to save precious lives. To no airmen on earth do these pilots of the TCCs take off their caps whether at the controls of a C-47 or a glider. The engineers go first, sometimes unsupported by combat troops. Then some must battle while others build bridges or airports for our constantly expanding circle of aerial attacks. Whether taking troops and supplies in or moving wounded out, these daring pilots baffle the enemy with their unsurpassed mastery of flight. Supermen of the air, they were the spearhead of our North African campaign in the mightiest mass migration the world has ever seen. From England to Oran, 1,500 miles without the loss of a single man. When about to cut loose, the gliders are brought to the grass tops so the fighters can get into action quicker in their blitz landing. Though the maneuverability of the glider may not be great, these boys can make a 90-degree turn and take whatever comes. Bumps cloud ground or fences. The efficiency of gliders is disclosed in the expanding conflict in Europe. There, lakes, streams, and canals abound, ready to bear landing fields. And so, on water, cloud ground, or between somebody's house and barn, a TCC pilot lands his men, though he sometimes loses a wing and a prayer doing it. The C-47s may get away, but the gliders are there for keeps and fight it out, win or lose. There's no such thing as a draw. Two squadrons like these were piloted 4,000 strong across the Coral Sea and the Owen Stanley Mountains without loss of a man or a piece of equipment. And in time to win in a gallant onrush, the first great battle of New Guinea. Out of the Mediterranean like Neptune's sons, piloted by invincible veterans only a year old in the service, our airborne troops opened the Battle of Sicily. We salute the men of the Troop Carrier Command, first on the ground, first in the air, and first in the heart of democracy's victorious struggle to survive.
Goodbye.